My name is Nassine Sabs. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Jesus Christ was telling us a lot more in that parable than many people understand. In fact, the whole world will be deceived. This is what the Lord has told us. And the Lord has told us that his words are a lamp and that the words of the prophets are a lamp. So this parable of the wheat and the tares, why is it so important? Well, first off, it's the word of God and every word of God is important. Secondly, on a human understanding, what do we make of it? Okay, there's uh, wheat and there's tares. So there's good people and there's bad people. We all understand that. But what is your perception of good people and bad people? It's just good people and bad people, isn't it? That's not what the parable of the wheat and the tares is about. The parable of the wheat and the tares is about something exceedingly serious. It's a warning, which is a lamp for our feet, so we understand how much danger we are in living on this. You may know what wheat looks like, but do you know what a tear looks like? You can picture a wheat in your mind right now. You know what it looks like. What about the tear? What are you seeing? A daisy? A green plant? A tear looks exactly like wheat. You can't tell the difference. It is an exceedingly well-made counterfeit. Now in the parable of the wheat and the tares, the angels come to the earth, they see what's happened and report back to the Lord. And they tell the Lord that there's been tares, these weeds which look exactly like wheat, planted on the earth, which is the field. And they ask the Lord, should we go back and uproot them? And the Lord replies, no, least you uproot any of the wheat. Now whether the angels would have made a mistake or not could be open to debate but the point is God was not prepared to risk a single one of us. He knew that the counterfeit was exceptionally good. He said leave them there until the time of the harvest. Now let's just look at what a Darnell and wheat are once again. You can't tell the difference until it's time for harvest. So you begin to understand now. When it's time for harvest, you can tell that's not wheat. That is a tear, a bearded darnel. Wheat can be made into bread, which represents the body of Christ, which represents us as we are all from the same loaf. A tear, however, it's full of poisonous fungus. It will make you very sick. If you eat enough of it, it will kill you. If you leave it in the crop, it will ruin the whole crop. So it has to come out. There's no two ways about it. And the Lord has attributed the word harvest to the earth and to us. And he said that at the time, these tares will be tied in bundles and burnt. Now still, that may not have struck the right chord with you. Let me just go through that one more time. The Lord has said that weeds, that counterfeits of human beings, have been planted amongst human beings. That's counterfeits of human beings. They are not human, in other words. They look like us, but they're not like us. Elsewhere in scripture, the Lord tells us that we can tell them by their fruits. Now clearly, if one plant produces wheat, it is a good plant. And if one plant produces poisonous tares, it's a bad plant. 
So we can tell who they are by their actions, by their fruits, but also at the time of the harvest, they will become physically apparent that they are different. And this is what God has told us, that counterfeit human beings have been placed on this earth who look just like us and will continue to look just like us until the time of the harvest and then they will become apparently different and we will know. If you look at any of the buildings in the UK you'll find that they depict flying saucers and so do most of the houses. In fact, most of the street signs. In fact, it's just absolutely everywhere to the point where it's absurd. If you watch our series, Nibiru Palace, uh, you'll begin to understand because there is no short explanation. So please watch that so you understand what these signs and symbols uh, are and how they're hidden in the buildings. They're brazenly in the open, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you, you won't perceive them. Tony Blair, before he left, said something very, very strange. He said that we should have larger ambulances made to accommodate taller people for the 2012 Olympics. Now, have you seen a British ambulance and how long it is? Why would we need bigger ambulances for taller people? So where are these people suddenly going to come from in 2012 that can't fit into a UK ambulance, which is absolutely huge? Well, let me tell you where they're going to come from. They're going to come from here, on this earth. And they're also going to come from Nibiru. Please open your eyes. In the name of Jesus, the world is not how you have been told it is. The Lord has told us the whole world will be deceived. We are all in so much danger. And it's about to reach its climax within the next few years. Live a life full of Jesus, not a life full of lies, deception and blinkering. This world is not what you think it is and it's all about to go pretty much pear-shaped very, very shortly. If a London ambulance can't fit um, people in 2012, doesn't that tell you something's wrong? It's either that or Tony Blair's completely stuck staring mad. Or I misheard him, but I didn't mishear him. And I don't think he's mad. Do you?